In this video, I'm going to be talking about the non-surgical BBL, also known as the Sculpture Butt Injections. I'm going to be talking about what it is, how it works, and if it could be the answer to you achieving that perfect hourglass figure. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I am Dr. K and I'm a cosmetic doctor with tons of experience in doing non-surgical cosmetic treatment. I'm here to give you the lowdown and the inside info on all these cosmetic and non-surgical treatments. So without much ado, sit back, grab a pen and paper, get comfy, and most importantly, keep watching. In recent years, we have seen an ass astronomical rise in BBLs and the quest for the perfect hourglass shape with the perfect booty to fit in your apple bottom jeans. But the surgical BBL can be very dangerous and many women have even died on the operating table. Plus, it doesn't always give the most natural results which is why more people are looking for safer alternatives like the Sculptra butt lift. So what is Sculptra then? For those of you who've never heard of the word sculpture, it's actually a type of filler. The main chemical that makes up sculpture is called poly L lactic acid. This is a gel like substance similar to the lactic acid that your body naturally produces. Sculpture works by stimulating your body to make collagen. And it's this collagen that fills in areas and naturally adds volume. The overwhelming good news is that Sculptra is safe. We've been using it as far back as the 1990s and it's FDA approved. Sculpture works differently to other types of filler. Whereas other types of dermal fillers made up of hyaluronic acid work by taking up volume and filling up spaces, Sculptra works by stimulating your own body to make collagen. So it's not the Sculptra itself that's the key ingredient, is the fact that by injecting it into specific spaces, it forces the body to produce extra collagen in those areas, and it's that collagen that fills up the spaces and takes up the volume. This is the key difference between Sculptra and other types of filler. And as a result of that, you tend to get a much more natural result with Sculpture because it's your body's own collagen that's filling up the area rather than an artificial filler or silicone or cement as with some horror stories. The other good thing about Sculpture is that it can be used in other body parts like your face, neck and arms. So what are the benefits of the Sculptra BBL? Sculptra's main benefits come from the fact that it avoids the need for painful and invasive surgery. There's no need to harvest fat from specific areas. So if you don't have enough fat for a traditional BBL, Sculptra might be a suitable option. You're not having to have invasive surgery, so no need for general anesthetic. Sculptra can also improve the skin texture on your hips, bum and thighs. So if you suffer with quite a lot of dimpling, cellulite, or skin irregularities, then Sculptra may be a good option. And it can also be used for filling in the so-called hip dips. It's a much, much, much quicker procedure to go through than the BBL. One of the biggest benefits, in my opinion, is avoiding the lengthy aftercare. And most importantly, you're not sacrificing your life. This is not to say that sculpture injections are not without their complications. There are some things that can go wrong and you need to be aware of them before going for the procedure. So what can go wrong? While I know that a few women may go back for multiple rounds of BBL, in an ideal world, the surgical BBL is a one and done procedure and you tend to see your results pretty quickly afterwards. Sculpture is different and depending on the results that you're after and what you're working with naturally, you will most likely need to have multiple sessions usually around two or three sessions of Sculptra to get that volume that you're after. This can add to the cost. The Sculptra product comes in vials and depending on how full and how much volume you want, you may need more vials. With each vial of Sculptra that's injected, that means more money. So potentially, if you add it up with having several sessions of Sculptra and lots of vials of Sculptra, 
This may work out to be quite an expensive option. Lumpiness and uneven areas are the most common problems with sculpture. And this is often related to technique and not following the aftercare. So it's very important that you pay attention to the aftercare instructions and massage the areas thoroughly to break down any lumps. Unfortunately, the results of sculpture are not permanent, although results can last anything up to seven years. What are the next steps? and what does the procedure involve? Well, I'll tell you. The initial consultation is a very important part of the treatment and should not be missed. It's very important that you have this chat with your professional and make sure that you're both on the same page. Believe me, there's nothing worse about you thinking one thing and your client thinking something else. That only leads to disappointment and a whole Pandora's box of disaster. So the best thing for both of you is to be open and honest about what you're looking for so that your professional can advise you accordingly. That way, you're saving yourself any unnecessary time and aggravation. And if it turns out that sculpture is not the right treatment for you, at least nothing has been lost. You can move on and explore other treatments. There will often be a bit of a gap between your initial consultation and your appointment itself. That's because the sculpture needs to be prepared. Sculpture comes as a powder in a vial and this needs to be mixed up according to specific instructions. On the day of the treatment, you'll come into the clinic and your professional again will check your health history, make sure that there aren't any surprises because surprises always come up. Then you'll be asked to change into a gown, the areas that you want to have filled in, marked, and pictures taken. You will then have numbing anesthetic cream applied to the area, and you'll normally have to wait about 20, 30 minutes for the anesthetic cream to work before treatment will start. During the treatment, your professional will inject the sculpture into the specific areas that you both agreed and marked. And that whole process takes anything from 20, 30 minutes up to an hour, depending on how much volume needs to be injected and how complex the procedure needs to be. It's very important though that there will be some massage of the areas. This is to make sure that the sculpture is evenly distributed in the area because nobody wants a lumpy booty. Once you've had the massage, the treatment is complete. You will then have to follow the aftercare instructions and given a review appointment to come back. Depending on if you've planned for further sessions of sculpture, you can then talk about it with your professional. And that's the process in a nutshell. So would I recommend it? Definitely the sculpture butt injections are a much, much, much safer option than the surgical BBL. However, the results are slow. It can be expensive. It does depend on your body's natural ability to produce enough collagen. That's why it's really important to have realistic expectations. You need to be realistic in what you can achieve. And my last tip is research, research, research. Not only researching the procedure, but researching your clinic. I hope these tips have been helpful. And if they are, make sure to like and comment down below. If you are new to my channel and you are not subscribed and you like this sort of content, then please think about subscribing and joining me here on my channel. As ever, I hope you guys are staying safe and well, and I'll see you next time.